Hello, this is Bethany Daly with Getting It Pegged and KB Looms bringing you the tutorial for the bare beanie that is double knit on the rotating double knit loom. So we're going to go over step by step how to make this really cute beanie and show you how to do the color work in it as well as the ribbing brim and the and it switches to ribbing up here to make it a better gathered top and we're just going to go over all of the steps and how to make this it's super soft and fluffy and you're going to love it the first sample used a uh, knit picks brava bulky in denim and white there was about one and a half skeins of used for the denim and about a half a skein used for the white. And there's about 136 yards in here per skein. So um, about 200 yards, I would say, in the blue, in the main color, and about 50 to 75 yards, I'd say, in the contrasting color, which in this case was white. And this is a bulky weight yarn. Today, when we're doing the tutorial, we're going to be using another Knit Picks brand of yarn, uh, Wool of the Andes Bulky, in chocolate for the bear, and white for the main color. Okay, and what I've done with these yarns is I have my main balls that we will be working on, but we'll also be working on little bobbins of yarn. I've made one for the bear color, I'm, I'm sorry, the main color, and a couple for the bear colors. And I used uh, the little bobbins by Clover, but you really don't have to use these. You can just make little yarn balls if you'd like, or attach it to a piece of cardboard, whatever works for you, just to have a separate little ball to help the color work process go a little smoother. It just, um, creates a better line behind your design when you break up the colors. And I'll show you how to do that as we go through. If you can see on the feet here, because this is worked from the bottom up, the feet, you can see a little bit of the blue behind the feet. And that's because I was carrying the main color behind while wrapping the pegs behind that white and it just shows up a little bit and whereas where i'm any farther above in the bear you can see just really nice crisp clear white color that is when i started to not carry the main color behind and i started breaking up breaking it up with the separate balls of yarn and it just seemed to work really uh a lot better that way so we're going to go over how to make that work for you in your color work while, while using double knitting okay so we're going to set that there and the first thing that we're going to do is cast on using our main ball of yarn for the main color let's scooch those aside and we're going to, I, I did, as you can see here, I have numbered my pegs um, so that you can see. It, it just helps us stay a little bit better on track uh, while using the color work chart. And I've just used masking tape to put across here and then uh, used a permanent marker to make the numbers. But I also have markers here, and those are just to help me stay on track as we're going along. This is our first set of pegs. Then this second set on peg 24 of blue pegs, this marks the end of the bare colorwork pattern. And the center one is the center of the bare color work pattern and that just helps ground us while we're working on the loom and helps us stay on track and it's just an easy reference point so I have those marked on there just to help okay us out. so what we were going to do first is take our main color yarn and we're going to start with a slip knot just like that and then we're going to place that slip knot on the peg one Thank you. 
Now we're going to wrap from peg one back around to the back peg one and bring it back around to the front and I'm going to skip pegs two and three and wrap around peg four. Then bring it back up and wrap it around peg, the back peg of peg three. And then back to skip peg five and wrap around peg six. And we're gonna skip the back peg of peg four and wrap around peg five. So what we are doing is skipping every other peg now. We set that up by first skipping two here, but that's the only time that that happens. It's just to set up this zigzag pattern. Okay, so we're just going through and skipping every other peg as we wrap at an angle. Oops. Like this. Sometimes, if it helps, you can put your fingers on the pegs that you've just wrapped, like this. This is what I generally do. I'm just m keeping my hand away for you while I'm doing this, so you will see what I'm doing. But yeah, that helps keep things from springing off the pegs as you wrap. Okay, and now here we are, we're wrapping peg 52, and then back around the back peg 51. Now, we're gonna go around again and fill those empty pegs. So we're going to skip peg one and go straight to peg two, which is our first empty peg, and go right back and wrap the back peg two. And do the same thing for peg three, but now we're going to the back of peg four, and you're just going to now wrap all of those pegs to fill them, all the empty ones, and you're just going to wrap all those. So each peg will have a loop. Oops. Just like this. And you can see how it kind of makes that cool design where there's peg pairs like a four together at a slight angle and that's what creates our ribbing stitch believe it or not these back pegs become the pearls and the front pegs are our knits just forms them automatically when we're double knitting okay so here we are now at the back of peg 52 and I'm and that is it we have now completed a full um, it's a full wrap but it because we're working in the round it it requires two pass-throughs to wrap all pegs now what we're going to do is just scooch those down just a little bit it doesn't have to be all the way just enough to make room for another loop on the peg and I have here just a length of whatever yarn you want to use that is a contrasting color that we can use for our waist yarn. And this is our anchor yarn, which is going to be placed around these loops, like this, all the way around. And we're going to pull those through here at... Um, right before peg one, the end of our row. I'm just gonna pull those down through the loom. And what that does is hold these loops, our cast on loops, um, separate from the rest of the work. And then that way we can go back and finish them up after the fact. So it's nice, uh, it leaves a very nice, smooth, braided edge. As you can see, when we go back and finish those loops, see how wonderful and professional that edge looks? There's no loose loops whatsoever. It's still stretchy, and it just makes a really nice edging. So that is what we're going to do for our brim edge. 
And that requires our anchor yarn. Let's see, it's still looped here. Okay, so that's just gonna hang down, that's fine. All right, now we're going to wrap it again in exactly the same manner that we did before. So around peg one to the back of peg one, skip two and peg four, the back of peg three and so on, like we did our very first time around the loom, just like this. Keep wrapping all the way around, skipping every other peg at an angle. So each, now you will see that we're making it so that each, every other peg will have two loops on them. Okay. Okay, we're at the beginning. So we're going to wrap it again like we did to make sure that all of our loops or all of our pegs have been filled. So we're going to come from the back of peg 51, clear to peg 2 at the front, then the back, peg 3, and then over here to peg 4. It kind of does a little spreading you start here and then goes over here and that's what sets you up to to do your zigzag and your ribbing stitch and we continue so that you're filling in all the gaps so each peg now will have two loops on them I find double knitting very soothing. I, I love the wrapping method. It just feels really good and almost a little hypnotic to me. <laughs> okay, so here we are at peg 52. All of the pegs now have two wraps on them and we're going to knit them off. Just the bottom loop over the top. And I start where my last stitch was wrapped because that helps to kind of anchor that yarn so you don't have to worry about holding it so much. Then you're just gonna lift them all over. And what I do with this rotating loom is I will go a little bit of a distance on one side In the front and then I'll come over here and I'll do the back of those pegs like this where I can see it so that both peg pairs have now been knit off continue on the inside part those front pegs. I kind of don't really have a certain order that I knit them off. I just sort of break it up and when doing that it helps you to not have a certain place that is looser than other ones because if you start and stop at the same place every time you could end up with a ladder effect where there's a hole goes down your project um, 
with a loose area and you can see it looks like a little chain or a ladder and alternating where you start and stop knitting these off every row will help you not have that effect at all just a little tip It does take a little bit of time to knit off all of these because there are 104 pegs that we're working on. But because of that, it creates such a nice, warm, fluffy um, fabric with that double knit weave. It's definitely worth the extra pegs. <laughs> Okay, make sure we've got all of our pegs knit off. And yes, they are. So that row is complete. So we're gonna go ahead and push that down. And it's all done. Row number one, our first brim row. So I'd like to point out something about the hat we're working on versus the chart that we're using to make this hat. As you can see, they are actually um, a mirror image from each other. And that's mainly because I chose to cast on to my loom going in a counterclockwise direction because that's just what's more most comfortable for me. And I just follow it the same from uh, right to left, matching my peg numbers the way they are written here and it all comes out it's just that the bear is switched around if you want your bear to look exactly like this and facing in that direction then simply cast on going in a clockwise direction still following all of the steps like they're written and the peg numbers here and you will have a bear that looks just like this okay so that is why that is So all you do for that is you're going to just repeat the same exact thing that I just did here to create our first cast on row. Just repeat it exactly the same. You go around twice to fill each peg and you won't have to do it the fourth time because you already now have a base loop. You have base loops on all of your pegs now. So you'll only have to go around twice to fill each of your pegs so that each peg will have two loops on it. And then you knit off and that will be row two. Okay. And then you'd keep doing that until you have finished six rows of your uh, ribbing. I see that one of these slipped off, so fixing it there. There we go. So yes, go ahead and pause your video and meet me back here when you have completed six rows of ribbing. All right, so I have completed my six rows of ribbing and I'm now ready to go with row seven of the chart. And as you can see here, with our chart, um, here's seven, and it starts with our checkerboard pattern. And it starts with the blue in this, or main color, in this case it would be white for us. And then the white represents our bear color, so in this case, for us, is brown. So we're going to, do a very simple technique and really all it is is doing a stuck net technique for your um, double knit loom so you're going to start the peg number one is a main color so we're going to start with wrapping peg one and come here to the back of peg two and then the front of peg three back of peg four. So really we're just weaving back and forth between the two uh, looms and we're skipping every other peg. So we're just gonna do this the entire way around for our first run through this time. And here we are. Back to peg one. Now what we're going to do 
is take our our bear color and I'm just going to kind of hold it for now and I'm going to now wrap around all of the pegs that we left open before and that will have it showing peg with peg two starting with our contrast color so we're going to go first just take it back to the back on uh, the back of peg one and then come across to peg two and then I'm gonna just hold that in place a little bit wrap just like we did before but we're this time hitting those pegs we missed last time yes Okay, now we are back at the front of 52. We're going to come around so it ends with our contrast color on the front of 52. I'm going to knit that off. And I'm also going to knit off these front ones just to hold our yarn better. So I don't have to worry about holding those tails. Okay, there we go. We've now fastened that down. And we're just going to go around and knit off every peg, just like before. And again, I'm keeping with the tradition of not knitting off in the same order each row. I'm just mixing it up and going however I feel like each time so that we don't get those loose chains. Okay, that completes our first checkerboard row, row seven. I'm gonna push those down so it's ready for the next row. Okay, so our chart is showing, now this next one on row eight, is gonna start with our bare color or contrast color, which for us is brown. And then peg two will be our main color, or for us today, white. So in order to start that, we're going to take our main color yarn and start at peg two. And then go to three, four, like this, so on and so forth. So really, everywhere where there's a brown, you're gonna loop over top of it with a white so that the color is offset. Okay, so we wrapped around the front of 52, and I'm just going to leave it there, and I'll show you why in a second. I'm going to knit that off so it holds it for us. Okay, now because this, um, our contrast color is coming from one of the front pegs, I'm going to go ahead and go around number one. And since that was empty from the last time we wrapped our main color, I'm going to go around one so it helps it ricochet from that back and then be able to go around one in the front because remember this row is starting with the contrast color on the first peg. So this helps it go back and forth rather than from front to front. Okay, so now we went from to one to the front or the back, one to the front, and now I'm gonna go one, uh, two to the back, three to the front, four to the back, five to the front. So now we've caught up and we're now going to our normal uh, wrapping mode of skipping every other peg. Okay. 
Okay, we're back at the beginning. And we're going to go to 51 and the back of 52. And then we're all caught up with this row. And we're going to knit off all of the pegs. Okay, I believe that is everything. I'll push those down. And that it completes row eight. Okay. All right, now row nine is all blue, which is all of our main color all the way across, which means we're going to be doing that in white. So same method as what we've just been doing, but instead of switching colors the second time around the loom, we're just going to continue in white and then knit everything off. So why don't you go ahead and do that and meet me back here when you're done with row uh, nine. All right, I have completed row nine of our chart. And you can see it looks like it's not all white, but that's because our row just before this was an alternating row. So those are the loops we knit off. So you can see some of that going around. So we are going to start with row 10 now. And row 10 is where we start the bear. And you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little squares that have our main color, which is white for us, and then three bear color squares, and we're gonna stop right there. <laughs> we'll stick with the seven and the three for now. So, and you can easily find where you are, what peg number, by just taking that square and going down to your peg so you can match it onto your loom, and it'll be a little easier to keep track of where you are. Um, let's do the first part, which is our main color, and we're gonna wrap seven uh, pegs of it, and it's just stockinette, double knit stockinette. So we're going from peg one, two, three, four, five, six, and here we are on peg seven. Because of the fact that this is a real dark yarn, um, I was going to carry it across just for those three, but I don't like that idea because the dark yarn is going to show in front of that light yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that. Yes, we'll have a, a an end to weave in, but I prefer that over um, having brown show through the front side of our work. So here we are. I have not done anything about our the ones we've missed here because I'm going to now um, actually, bobbin will come in a minute I'm gonna go ahead and take this yarn from the main ball that I've just cut and I'm going to um, we're gonna bring that up through where we're wrapping this around peg seven so it needs to go through the center of that wrap see that and that is how you're going to keep your sections of color and main color connected because you're attaching them through the centers by twisting the yarns together. So I'm going to go ahead and take our main color yarn and just go ahead and do our stockinette right on back to peg one. And now we um, are back here and I'm just going to knit these off so that it's not going to come loose and I won't have to worry about um, this popping off of our pegs. Okay, so now we're going to wrap these three uh, pegs 
that we need. And I'm going to get my main color bobbin ready to go too. Because that's coming right up here in a minute. So, first we're going to wrap pegs 8, 9, and 10, right? But now following that are going to be our main color rows again. So I'm going to do the same thing that I just did with my brown, and I'm going to put that um, coming up through the center of our main color. So see that, how it's coming up through the center when I wrap this around? That just keeps it all connected properly. Okay, so now I have three pegs of brown wrapped. And I'm going to knit off those to make sure that they stay for us. Let me look at that back side here. Okay, now our chart shows our ma next main color rows are going to be from pegs 11 to pegs 15. So one, two, three, four, five pegs will be wrapped with the main color. So here's 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and then it's going to have another um, thing of our bear colored yarn coming up from the center again. So we wrap that around. So it comes right up through the center, through that last hole there. And then we're going to come back, see, and fill up our five pegs. And we'll knit those off. There we go. Got it. Okay, now we have some footwork to do, fancy footwork. One, two, three, four pegs of contrast color, one peg of main color, and then four again of contrast color. So... What we're going to do for that is, let's see, we're going to go ahead and wrap our four. One, two, three, four, to peg 19. Now because um, we do have a whole nother section of main color to do after we do this, the fourth leg, I went ahead and got out my second ball of the white because I know that that's a large section and a little bobbin probably would not be enough to get it done. So I just pulled it from this white white ball. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to actually bring this like we need to through the center of our looped our last looped contrast leg here and then continue this wrap so we have four brown here and knit off there we go just to hold it now because we only have in this case this next one only one and a little bit here when we get to the future rows I am going to do a little bit of carrying behind the brown of the white, which will be uh, a little bit more forgiving than carrying the brown behind the white, because that would be have more tendency to show up. So, so that we don't have to have a whole separate little ball right here for these, I'm going to go ahead and con consider this with as part of this main part. So there'll be one and then four and then complete the rest of the row with the main color. So that is going to 
work like this. And some of this is not an exact science. Um, just kind of play with it and see the best way for you to wrap. And that's okay. You know, whatever. Sometimes what you think is best is what is best. So what we're going to do is we wrap this single one. And then we're going to skip four. One, two, three, four. Those are for our contrast color. And I am going to go then to behind peg 25. Because remember this marker? This means that we are on the outside of the bear now. This is the end of the bear. So that's where we'll start our, our main color yarn to continue this whole row here. And I'm going to wrap, wrap, wrap all the way to the beginning again. But because we want the, these two sections to still be connected, we're going to have to twist, just like we did before. I'm gonna come around again so my yarns aren't wrapped the wrong way. Okay, so here we have our beginning ball we need to find that that's right here so i need to bring it to 52 and then make sure that this beginning skein comes up through that last loop through the center of that last loop see like this so it's ready to go this way so they're pulling a, against each other and that's what keeps them connected so that is in the right spot. So now I wrap back like this. And I'm getting to the point where I can't see. So I'm going to come back around this way. And here we are at the beginning. And then we bring it over here to our single peg 20 right there. And that's where we stop for that wrap. And knit those off carefully. Okay. Like that. Okay, now we're gonna grab our second bobbin of the contrast color and cast on to the, the last four little ones that need to be covered. And for this one, I'm just, uh, just putting it right on there. Not worrying about coming up through the center like this. So we've got one, two, three, four pig pairs, just like that. And then we're going to knit off. Okay, so now we have laid the foundation for our color work bear with all our little individual yarn balls. And we're gonna knit off all of those uh, loops that have not been knit off yet. Go ahead and do that and we will meet back here for the next row on the chart. Okay, I have completed row 10 of the chart and now it's time to do row 11. I did take a little time to straighten up all my little balls around so because each time they might get a little twisted so you just want to straighten it up each time and row 11 starts with one two three four five main color and then one, two, three, four, five, six contrasting color. So let's start with that right off the bat. Okay, so we do one, two, three, four, five main color. And we're going to now, because the next one is going to be this ball, we're going to, let me just double check. Yes, five. Um, Make sure that that ball comes up through the center. So I'm going to take this white ball 
and move it. Let's see. Did that do the trick? Nope. I just, sometimes it gets a little confusing which way to wrap, but let's see. Okay. I just went the opposite way. <laughs> Okay, so now if you look, you can see that the brown is now coming from the center of where I'm going to wrap the white. So they're pulling against each other. So that's exactly where we wanna be. So now I'm gonna continue our five pegs. Okay, and we're going to knit off to hold that in place. And that one's already knit off. Okay, now the next one is six, so we're going to wrap one, two, three, four, five, and six, and we need to make sure that this white bobbin is going to be coming from the center of that, so I'm going to reach around and twist it this way so see it's pulling against there okay so we brought back and now we have our one two three four five six pegs wrapped we're going to knit up here and look at our chart okay so We've done these, and now we're ready to do one, two, three, four, five of the main color, and then it goes into one, two, three of the contrast color. So let's do that. Five and three. Okay. So one, two, three, four, and five, and then this is the brown that is going to be coming up from the center. So I'm, that was an easy little twist. So get that done right away and finish wrapping our five. And then our three. I'm going to straighten these quickly. And three, so one, two, and three. And we'll bring this main color up through the center of that. One, two, three. And there we go. It's up through the center. And continue our three wraps. And knit those off. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we have... This is the row that we're on now. So now we need to do two of the main color and then we're going to skip three and then continue with the rest of the row. And we will have three to fill with our final contrast color. So we're going to do one and two and then we're going to skip three, one, two, three. So we're gonna start here at 25 and begin our regular stockinette wrapping just like this right here and then we're going to need to get our original ball over here and it's going to have to come up through the center remember just like we did before even though it's the same color, it still has to be connected with each other. So now we're going to wrap back. Like this. And here we are, ready to skip those three and wrap across the next two and we're going to fasten that down oh but okay this is one thing that we need to uh, take care of 
I forgot to do that. Okay, so that needs to come up through the center. So we're going to bring that up through so we won't see it being carried up. So now we're going to wrap that again. Okay, there we go. Now we can nip this off. Okay, good. And then we're going to wrap our three that are here. So one, two, three, and back again. And knit those off. And I'm just going to knit this off too. Okay. So now you're just going to carry on and knit off all of your loops all the way around the loom and meet me back here when that's all done and we will do the next row in line. All right, row 11 has been completed and now it's time to do row 12. And it shows that we have one, two, three, four, five, six rows or stitches of main color and one, two, three, four, five of the bear color. So let's do that. Six and five. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this um, brown needs to be coming up from this center. So I'm going to scooch that through so that now we will have it coming up through the center of our white like this and then we finish wrapping the six okay now we have five of the contrast color of our brown so one two three four five and our next color is going to be this one so it needs to come through the center like this and go back to finish our five like this and knit off to hold the next thing that the pattern shows our chart here showing that we have on row 12 we have one two three four five main color and one two three bear color so five and three so one two three four five and the brown comes up through the center one two three four five And then we have <clears throat> one, two, and three with this coming up through the center, this next one in line, three. Okay, now what it shows here is we've just done this three then this is the last one that we're gonna have to worry about these little oddball ones between the legs and it's just one then we skip three and then continue the rest of the row and back so one skip three and the bulk of the main color all right so we're gonna do one and then I'm gonna this a little bit out of the way there temporarily then we're going to skip three one two three and go to pick 24 actually two three yep 24 and then do our double knit stockinette gonna untwist from this one okay and all the way around 
to the front. And it's going to require us to get this one out of the way there. Wow. There we go. Okay. So now this needs to come up through the center like so before we finish wrapping that row like this. Okay. Okay, so here we're at 25. Now we have that brown one that I set aside over here. <clears throat> and I'm going to make sure that we come through, that it comes through the center of this last wrap here, like this. So it's tucked inside there. Okay, bring that off. And then we have our three to do of the brown. So one, yes, one, two, and three. And come back. And now it's time to start knitting off all of the remainder of the pegs. So feel free to do that and meet me back here as soon as you have finished those and we'll go on to the next row okay we've just completed row 12 of our pattern and now we're on to row 13 and it calls for one two three four five six seven of the main color and one two three four of the contrast color. So seven and four. So we're going to one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now when I come around, that brown is going to come through the center and around the corner and continue wrapping. Okay, now it's four of the next in this contrast yarn. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, and bring this up through that center. One, two, three, four. Okay, now the next thing we have in row 13 is one, two, three of our main color and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the bear color. So three and eight. <clears throat> so one, two, and three. This bear color is going to come up through that center. One, two, three. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this wrapping pattern by now getting the idea of how to twist the yarns. Now we're doing eight of the bear what color. One, two, three, four, five. Keep this loose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then this needs to come up through there that time okay so one two three four five six seven and eight go one two three four five six 
got. Okay, now our remaining stitches, because we don't have to do that funny fiddly bit, is going to be with our main color here. Now because, let's see, hold on. Yes, because we are now done with our separate little legs, we can actually cut this one and um, remove it from the mix here so that it's not in our way. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim that and set that aside. We may need it later. But that way it's just out of our way. We don't have to worry about it getting tangled anymore. So now we have just our um, second full ball of the main color. And we're just going to wrap that whole thing. All the way to the beginning. And here we are, peg 52. And we're going to make this one come through the center like this and wrap. And I'm going to untwist that from my ball here. There we go. And now I can continue wrapping back to where we were. Which is right here. All right. So now we have wrapped all of the different um, methods that we need for this row and we're ready to go ahead and knit off all of your loops. So do that and meet me back here in a jiffy. All right. Row 13 has been knit off and completed. Now we're ready to wrap row 14. So 14 calls for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Again, really the same as row 13. And 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, same as row 13. So we're just going to repeat that for row 14. So we're going to wrap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Make sure that brown is coming up through and wrap those seven again back to the beginning like so. And then four for the brown, making sure that we have this next white coming through the center of that last loop of the brown. And there's our four. Okay, just like that. Okay, I'm going to unwrap these. And this one. Okay, so the next one in line the next part between the little bear's legs is this one right here. It's just two of the main color, and that's going to be the last time we're going to need this center main color. <coughs> Excuse me. And then it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 contrast color, and it ends on row peg 23. So 2 and 10 to peg 23. Okay, so 1 and 2. That bare color comes through. 1 and 2 again. And then we wrap the bare color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And this needs to 
make that main color come up through that last loop just like that and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten like this and go ahead and do this one too since it's right there and now we finish the row with our main color all the way across from peg 24 to 52 and we're going to make sure to bring that up through the center so that we're connecting those just like that and here we go back again and back to the beginning of our main color section okay all right now again we're going to take the time to knit off all of these stitches and meet me back here for the next row in the pattern Okay, so row 14 has been completed and knit off, and we're ready for row 15. And this one is where we can um, breathe a little sigh of relief because we have less twisting of our yarns to do. See that? We have now reached to where we're only going to be twisting between this section and this section and then of course at the beginning once we wrap our whole big main part and it meets up with the beginning part so that'll be nice we can get rid of some of those bobbins so we're going to first wrap one two three four five six seven again but now it goes from peg eight all the way to, let's see here's 15 to 23 again so from peg 8 to 23 we're going to wrap in bear color and we're going to wrap one two three four five six seven to begin with so let's do that <clears throat> okay so one two three four five six and seven and bring it our brown up through the center and then back again okay and we're gonna knit that off like this and now we get to because we're done for now with these extra pegs here I am going to go ahead or extra bobbins I'm going to give those a cut just like this and pull those to the inside like that and now we don't have to worry about those we're gonna set those aside for now and now we just have three skeins of yarn <laughs> to worry about okay so we're going to wrap the brown from peg eight like this all the way to peg 23 yes that's right and then make sure we twist our yarn like this I'm gonna bring this around it like that and wrap back Just like that and we're going to knit off here to hold it and finish the row with our main color just like this and just like we have been and making sure to have this one come up through the center there like that okay all right 
right, there we go. We've done that and we will go ahead and knit those off so that the row will be done. I'm going to show you now that some of these center um, tails can actually be pulled down and brought out of the way. You can do that as you go along. You can see one is right here. You can, I think. Well, you can reach down and find where they begin and pull them down through the loom so that you don't have to have all of those hanging over the main loom part. And then just go ahead and continue the way we have been doing all the way. You're just going to carry on all the way through all of these rows. And when it gets to this blow black dot, you're not going to worry about that till the very end. So just knit that as a white or as um, your bare color. And then afterwards, uh, a little dot can be added for the eye if you like. But up here, you might want to add you can either carry your main color behind these two stitches or add one more little spool of yarn for these few bits here and then um, like we did down here and then just finish these rows and then you will do these two checkerboard rows just exactly like we did before down here okay and then once you've completed your your last checkerboard row you're going to go right into ribbing again and i will be here to help refresh you at that point i think you'll remember you got the hang of this now so we can go ahead and let you finish the bear all the way here and then do your checkerboard and then i'll meet you here at row 28 and we'll just do a refresher of how to do the ribbing stitch so go ahead and pause your video and meet me back here once you are done and are ready to begin row 28.